The next faction capital ship on the list will be the villain. This is the Serpentis carrier. Now, this ship does look like a villain when you look at it from the front. It kind of has that face on the on the bridge there, but the whole design of this ship is really beautiful. I would say one of the best looking ships in the game. Now, Serpentis ships are known for their strong webs, for their long range disruptors, and they're also known for their high DPS. And I personally expect to see all those states in this ship as well. Now let's take a look at the uh, basic info, trait description, the roll bonus on the villain is basically the same as the roll bonus on the other faction cares. Lightweight ship bonus per roll will give you plus 10% lightweight ship turret damage, plus 75% lightweight ship rocket damage. Versatile assault ship command bonus will give you plus 10% lightweight ship status heavy first speed, speed decrease, plus 5% lightweight ship flight velocity, plus 5% armor. So this is a armor tank ship, okay. Versatile assault ship defense upgrade, plus 5% armor plate hit point bonus, minus 5% armor plate capacity, plus 1 second armor plate activation time, team combat bonus, plus 5% care defense module armor resistance, and plus 10% care defense module transfer ratio, advanced care combos, plus 10% web range, plus 10% speed decrease, and plus 10% weapon disruptor op range per skill level. Overall, a pretty solid Serpentis ship. The villain has two frigates, one destroyer, four medium slots, eight low slots, three combat and three engineering rigs, basically the same setup as we have seen so far. A little bit over one million defense, the villain is a armor tank ship, although uh, hopefully I'll never see a cursed carrier, that's going to be something new. The capacitor 57,000 gigajoules is nice, the recharge time as well as the recharge rate is okay. It can lock 8 targets, 9.8 km is the signature radius, 70 meter scan resolution, 111 meter per second flight velocity, and 1.75 astronomic units per second is the warp speed. Overall pretty solid and comparable to the other faction cares. Now let's take a look at the build. Now the DPS 2.7 thousand because I have 4 medium slots and I have 3 lightweight ship slots. Now I have dual webs 1 point and of course uh, this the, the swarm care defense module. And I will show you uh, how the um, setup works when you try to fit the hangar rigs, the new the new rigs, the fourth rig slot that the new cares have. And a classic armor tank setup. Okay, now let's go on to the rigs. So this ship also has rig integrations. Now this time I actually focused on armor hit point as well as armor resistance. So this ship should have a lot of resistance on armor and it should have a lot of armor hit points. Should be a pretty nice combination and this build might be very interesting to use with the armor plates. We will see what the end result will be. However, I still prefer to have armor repair and uh, high resistances over having a lot of armor hit points. Now, I have the mono ex uh, mono hangar bay and now uh, I will show you how the procedure looks. Now you can't fit the hangar if the fighters or lightweight drones are equipped and let's try this time well looks like I can't uh, equip it or destroy it as long as I have as long as ships are fitted. Okay, so I have to pull out the ships of the hangar bay. Lightweight ship cabin. That's that's how it's called. Let's try it again. It should work. Well, it doesn't work because it requires all modules to be to be unequipped. So let's quickly uh, strip the ship from the from the fitting and let's try again. This is basically the procedure that you have to go through if you uh, are planning to if you're planning to use uh, the ship. And now I can fit the bipolar hangar bay, and now I have four slots, which should 
drastically improve the DPS. So if you want to have high DPS, you basically have to sacrifice one medium slot to achieve plus one lightweight drawn slot, and of course the higher the higher tier hangers do have different slots, and I think I will show you how that works. Now let's undock and let me show you the active stats of Undocking. the ship first. Okay, all the adaptives are on. 6.5 million hit points, 83, 89, 89 and 85% resistance, which is okay. Anything above 80% is uh, already pretty solid. So let me refuel the ship because I always forget to refuel the ship. And now I can use the defense module. 8.4 million. 5.7 thousand DPS, 88, 90, 92, and 88% resistance. Ah, okay, now let's boot up the damage control. 25 million hit points, 96, 97, 97, and 96 percent resistance on 881 thousand armor hit points. So far, looking pretty good. Okay, now you can swap the damage control into one capacitor battery if you are using an active tank. Or you can even uh, use triple capacitor batteries if uh, your ship has capacitor problems, although it should not have any capacitor problems that are going to be uh, very noticeable. Although it's very nice to have the capacitor batteries, they are working really nice on the, on the capital ships. Okay, let's take a look at how this build looks. Now I have triple adaptives and triple capacitor batteries. Now as you all know, the armor repairs Undocking. are a lot more generous on the capacitor, so with this build, this ship should be able to run the armor repairs for a very, very long time. 5.2 million hit points, 79, 87, 88, and 82% resistances, which is okay. 9 minutes is the capacity runtime. And now with the defense module active, 6.7 million hit points, 84, 90, 91, and 87% resistance. 22.2 km and minus 91.5% is the web strength and range. So this is a fully fledged serpentis ship. And the point has a 45 km range. The villain has, put a, has the potential to be uh, widely used into PvP. Now I have placed two armor plates. And I'm very interested to see the result. 1.1 million armor hit points. However, with this build the ship would be, would be a little bit slower. I will be a lot less agile because the armor plates do affect the mobility of the ship but the resistance should be pretty nice and the armor should hold a very very Docking long time so the overall impact on the capacitor is not going to be that drastic after all you have you have literally one million hit points over one million hit points on the armor 6.6 .6 million hit points, the resistance value values are the same. And with the defense module, it's 8.5 million, 84, 90, 91, and 87 on 1.1 million hit points. Very nice. Very interesting as well. Okay. Let's talk and let me swap the builds again now. This build has uh, three plates, 1.3 million hit points. Now, again, I personally prefer uh, to have resistance over armor hit points, but I can solve the resistance problem by using the thermal circulation implant, which will give me plus 20% armor resistance on all damage types. So let's unlock and let's see the results with this build. Technically, the thermal implant does replace one adaptive. So uh, this is basically like I have 9 low slots and basically I added plus 1 uh, armor plate so the overall effect should be better than with the previous build but we will see what will happen 
when I turn on all the modules. Okay. 7.5 million. 79, 88, 88 and 83% on 1.3 million armor hit points. Now when you activate the, um, the armor plate it's not going to be... Of course, not going to show much uh, difference on the armor. After all, uh, the armor plates have been nerfed a very long time ago. Now, let's take a look at the thermal implant using this build. 7.9 million hit points, 87, Undocking. 91, 91, and 88% resistance. With the defense module active, it's 10 million hit points, 90, 93, 93, and 91% resistance. And with the damage control, I expect 98 and 97%, 30 million hit points, 97 and 98%, just as expected. Overall, pretty solid and pretty tanky. Basically, immortal for about about 13 seconds. And now, let's have some fun with the villain. Now, I have to admit, the Serpentis ship naming is very interesting. Uh, the ships are usually named after some form of revenge or that type of thing. But this thing got called the villain. And yes, uh, that's, I would say, one of, the, one of the best ship names in the game at the moment. So, how does the villain perform? Now, I actually went and decided to go to take advantage of the DPS of this ship. This carrier has the highest DPS out of all the other faction carriers. So the drone bombs will work really, really well. Now, I changed the drone bombs and now I can remotely reload them. So there is no need for the drone ships to Undocking. come back for reload. I can just click on the implant. And this will uh, make anomaly running or mission running or even let's say special anomaly sites very easy to run. And I would say the villain has... It does feel like it does work the best so far. I already played all four of them. Uh, I like the Vlad Raider one after all. I personally uh, would fly that one as my main ship. However, the villain does have some things that other ships don't, and that is DPS. Now, DPS is not usually everything, although in some cases uh, it's very important. It's a very, let's say, situational and tactical thing. But overall, all the new cares have their own thing and that that's what makes them very unique and very fun now i'm very interested to see how much damage uh, this mission will do on my armor this is the high resistance build now i don't really expect to take much damage uh, this mission is basically like a storyline mission that's why I like to uh, I like to do them, and this is the reason why I like to test out my ships in in this mission because I have a lot of waves, and the waves are actually pretty serious. There's a lot of ships that spawn, which in every new wave, and they have a lot of webs, points, three scrambles on me at the moment, neutralizers, and other very nasty stuff. And so far, they reached attack. about. 40-50% of my shield which means they will go into my armor however I think I'm not Maybe going to be worried surrounded. about the armor on this thing because yeah uh, it has a lot of resistance and the yellow hardener helps at reducing the damage coming from railguns quite a bit surprisingly it works really well against railguns and I don't really see a lot of players use the yellow harder. The reactive harder is very important and can significantly reduce the incoming damage on certain weapons. And the damage control is also very important. Usually players only fit the red ones, but in my case I like to use all of them and well, on the capital ships since I already have like 8 slots I might as well use the 8 slots which makes 
uh, most of my ships able to survive the end of the world basically I'm pretty sure if there was a Titan over here spawning near me and just decides to doom the hell out of this mission I will still be standing with like 10 health and I'd still be warping out so that's the type of ships that that's the type of ships that I like to build and I'm pretty sure that this thing can withstand the doomsday from my titan did I just call doomsday of the titan the, the titan weapon end of the world I think I did my apologies for that uh, for some reason my brain connected doomsday with the with the end of the world or, or something like that I don't know happens recording at very late at a very late hour so mistakes might happen now I think you might be asking me well you're talking about titans well are there any news for the titans no there is no news for the titans yet and probably will not arrive in the game for I don't know one or two years from now after all uh, I would expect super, super capitals after the faction dreadnoughts are released which will probably happen sometime next year, so Titans and other super capitals perhaps perhaps in 2024, 20, 25, that's just what I would expect. But again, we will see. Now, the DPS part of the ship, I already uh, did mention that the, the DPS on this thing is pretty good, so uh, it does clear the mission very quickly. And of course, since I have swapped the implant a little bit, now the remote reload makes the mission running very faster, very easier as well, much easier. Now, now one thing that the developers will have to uh, adjust is the shield bubble. Now, as you can see, some parts of the ship are actually outside of the shield. This is because, well, they haven't uh, expanded the shield when they changed the hull uh, of the ships. And I'm pretty sure in one of the next updates they will, they will fix that. It's just a small aesthetical bug that doesn't really affect the game, but it kind of looks very funny when, you, when you're taking shield damage. I think the only care that does not have this issue is the anaconda or anacoda. I don't know if uh, if they uh, made a typo when they named the Gurista pirate carrier, but it's called it should be anaconda, but it's anacoda at the moment. So kind of funny. But but yeah, overall very solid update and honestly very in very interesting ships and this is what is making me even more excited about the tier 2 or tier 3 cruisers because you can expect a mechanic that we have on a similar mechanic that we have on the carrier on the tier 2 tier 3 cruisers which i think you all know uh, you can adjust the physical appearance depending on how you build the faction not the faction cruiser but the tier 2 the tier 3 cruiser so that's that's going to be a one a very interesting aspect of the game and potentially one of the ships that one of the ship types that I will save my isk for hopefully they will be re released in the next year there's a lot of things that I want to talk about but uh, let's say uh, let's say I'm not quite allowed to say everything so uh, with time with time you you will understand uh, what I'm talking about here but next year let's just say this next year is looking to be very interesting it might be the best year for the game so far uh, and that's all I'll say at the moment pretty exciting stuff oh, okay enough of that that's uh, a small teaser for 2023 with time everything will be you will you will know in time okay now this is the next wave my shield is slowly going down well the shield on this thing did hold really well and that is a lot of battleships around me oh, okay well not bad 
Not bad. They're doing some damage. They're trying their best to break the shield, but... I wish them luck to break the armor on this thing. That's not happening. Pretty sure that's not Shield happening. Damaged. The capacitor is at 97%. The shield at 4% about to hit armor. I still say and probably will uh, keep saying that capital ships, while they can have good DPS, are, are usually... Uh, should usually be fitted to be tanks because they're big, they're very slow, well very slow, that doesn't count for the for the Vizago, that thing is that thing is fast, but in general capital ships are slow, they're very easy targets, they're huge ships and speed doesn't really help them much. High DPS also doesn't really help them much when, for example, uh, they kill all of your fighters or they kill all of your lightweight drones. Or they basically uh, use dampeners to prevent you from locking on targets so that you literally cannot defend yourself. So that's why a tank uh, is, in most cases, in like 90% person of cases the way to go even uh, when the ship is used as a PvE ship especially if it is a PvE ship you never know when you can get tackled so you have to be uh, always prepared to uh, to tank for as long as possible until help arrives and these things are quite expensive let's be honest these things and are currently one of the most expensive ships in the game and We're you can only imagine attack. how excited someone will be uh, if they get the chance to tackle one. You really We're can expect attack. a whole alliance or coalition or corp to drop on your ship if they spot you out in the wild doing anomalies or something like that. So it's very important to uh, be able to withstand a lot of DPS. Now in some cases, in very rare cases when you are in a fleet, uh, in a rotting fleet or something similar, then a DPS build is going to work, especially if you have logistic ships, we have the forest auxiliaries, that can be very helpful to keep these things alive, but again, uh, the question is, how many blues in your alliance are actually spies? That's the, that's the biggest question here. How do you know that that blue teammate of yours is not going to tackle you and open Sino with an alt that's also within the alliance and then all of a sudden there is a hundred dreadnoughts shooting at your faction faction care. Yeah, uh, that's something that is uh, probably going to happen to some players. Uh, if it already did not happen, I'm pretty sure it already happened so that's why I'm mentioning, mentioning it. But yeah, uh, when you're flying these ships, don't trust anyone for a while because you never know if they will go and decide to to kill your 200 billion carrier. And I, I can tell you, I mean, I know how this game works and I believe all of you know that as well. So when you're flying this thing, trust no one except yourself and your alts. So, uh, yeah, that's basically the way to go for a while. After all, faction ships tend to create very tasty kill mails and they tend to drop very nice loot. Speaking from my personal experience, I love to shoot at faction ships. And if it ever happens that a faction care just land, just randomly lands in a bubble, I can tell you the whole corp will wake up just to kill that carrier. And I'm pretty sure. Uh, everyone will most likely do the same. I mean, I already like fell out of the chair once when the Nestor popped in. That was when we killed the, that Nestor. That was one of the best kills that we've ever had. A three-year, uh, three-year-long wait came to a conclusion when that Nestor popped in on the gate. That was one of the 
again, one of the luckiest kills that we've ever made. And probably one of the best kills as well was a 19 billion ship. Not the most expensive Nestor, we killed one before in low sec, 25 billion, but this one was a little bit special because this one actually had a pretty good build and it was also a pretty solid pilot who was flying it. So overall that was uh, a that was a good kill. Now back to the villain here. The villain, as any other villain does, does not go down easily. And they have barely scratched the surface of my armor. 99% armor left. Well, uh, I already told you that the armor on this thing is uh, ridiculous. After all, all of my ships are built to be ridiculous and yeah I know I'm well aware of their price as well most of the ships that you see here are, are let's say they're very expensive that's the least I mean I can't even find a word to describe how expensive some of my ships are or how expensive some of them used to be I know my revelation that I, f that I fly, or that I used to fly, that thing has the X types, A types now, it has integration rigs, C type arm repairs, it has all that good stuff. And uh, I basically uh, replicated a build that I developed on the test server, and honestly, I'm still very, uh, very happy with that revelation. I mean, who would not be happy with a ship that has like 95-98% resistance without using the damage control? One of the most ridiculous ships that I've ever flown. Well then, I'm slowly finishing up with this mission here. Uh, the villain has a very nice DPS output, so if you're looking for a carrier that has a good DPS, then this one is definitely the way to go. You have pretty good defense, and it's also pretty good for PvP, after all it has uh, the Serpentis web and Serpentis disruptor. Even one web should be enough, but uh, if you like to use dual webs, then uh, I would say go with the 4 medium slot layout. In some cases, 4 medium slots are better than having 4 of the drone slots, however I personally like to uh, use for drone slots, that way I have more points and more DPS. And of course, with the drones you can do the web stuff, you can also do the Nosferatu other stuff. So, the drones can replace your medium slot modules really well. So in the end, having three medium slots is actually not a bad thing. It's not bad, it actually does uh, look and does run really, really well, at least from my personal experience. Okay, and this is the last ship, let's dock, or not, I forgot to turn off the sensor mode, so okay, now I can dock. Well then, uh, this was the villain, a very, very evil looking ship with very with very scary DPS and overall a very terrifying look although again I have to say this ship is very beautiful all of the new cares have beautiful hull designs and uh, all of them so far have been very nice to fly very nice to test out no complaints about them yet because I haven't really found anything to complain on that much I would, uh, I still will say that they do need, and they will probably get a new module or two that will increase the um, lightweight ship damage, the, that will increase the lightweight ship speed, basically the same modules that we have on the normal carriers for the normal fighters, so these ships with time will be greatly improved with the new modules and of course new rigs and other stuff like that. So, hope that you enjoyed this little run with the villain. Again, if you are flying the Thanatos and if you have, let's say, uh, 
one extra Thanatos or if you have extra ISK and if it just happens that you have uh, a couple friends who can build this ship and if you want to fly a new ship then uh, the villain is definitely a very nice choice overall I had fun with it uh, the ship does work really really well it's unique and all of the other characters uh, all of the other carriers are also uh, very unique and fun to fly so if you want to fly one of these ships go ahead you will definitely enjoy the faction carriers and with that being said hope that you enjoyed this video hope that the builds and tactics as well as the ideas help you at building your own ship that's my main goal here and with that being said stay safe fly safe and i'll see you next time